Welcome to this video about STM32 Cubemix pinout conflict resolution. We have seen together how to do basic pinout configuration for a GPIO or an IP. But usually, a project could allocate all the pin of a selected MCU, and in this case, you will probably face some conflict during this definition. In this video, I would like to show you some functionality which could help you, like the help bullet, the signal pinning and pinning, the pin stacking, and some various possibilities to reset or export the current pinout definition. Let's start with the help bullet. In this project, I define four pins as GPIO output. Doing this implies some limitation in the allocation for the other pin. Let's have a look. If I expand all the categories of the high P, I can see some of them with a yellow triangle or red circle. If I put the mouse on this one, we can see the status, partly disabled conflict with P9 GPIO and P10 PB6. If I go in the configuration of this timer, I can see which functionality I will see are not possible. Again, I can put my mouth on this yellow warning and I've got the detail. P10 and PB6 are already booked, I will say. So if I remove the configuration on PB6, for example, now the partial conflict disappears. Okay, so it's a way for you to identify which pin is conflict, which which pin. I will set it again. Now let's have a look at the USART. This time it's red. That means you can't configure USART at all. No mode are possible. In fact, what I've done, I just define as GPIO output all the pins that could be the RX on the takes of the USART. So again, if I just modify this one, for example, now it's partial. That means I can at least have a single wire half duplex because I release a pin which could be a user to one takes. So this is how you can identify the limitation and the con potential conflict between uh, your pin configuration. The last point I want to show you, you have seen, you can't select USB device. And again, if you put the mouth, you will have this message. It was the middleware. And in fact, it's active only when the USB OTG FSIP is configured. So in this case, it just tells you what you have to do to be able to select this one. So you go in the USB full speed as device, and this time now I can select this one. Signal pinning and pinning allows to configure STM32 Cubemix to solve pinout conflict by itself. If I come back with my example with full GPIO output defined, on the conflict with the user one, which can be configured at all, we can see that on each pin, we've got this pinning uh, symbol. That means we don't allow STM32 Cubemix to reallocate this GPIO output to another location or another pin. But I can remove this configuration. For example, I right click on it, and you've got signal and pinning. That means we allow STM32 Cubemix, if you don't find any solution, to move this GPIO to another pin. The same thing is for this one, for example. And now you can see that user is completely selectable, I would say, and configurable. I can now put in asynchronous mode, and automatically, the two GPIO outputs that have defined on those pins are moved to another location. In the case of GPIO, there is many possibilities. Just take the two first one. And now I can say, OK, this one is now signal pinning. I don't want any reallocation if I've got conflict and such kind of things. So it's a way that you will indicate to STM32 Cubemix if it can move a signal or not. Let's see now the pin stacking functionality. This one allows you to assign more than one signal to one pin. So let's imagine now we've got um, PA9 has a GPIO output. PA10 has a GPIO output. So each time I do a 
left click on the pin, select the configuration. And now on the same pin, I want to have the user functionality. I mean the GPIO output is user at boot time and after this pin will be reallocated and used by the um, user. This could be done with a right click with pin stacking. Pin stacking and now as you can see I can select user takes. Do the same thing on the pin stacking for the PHM. I can select user Rx and now if I activate the user connectivity user one and now I can configure it as asynchronous. If I left click on it I can see the functionality so user Rx configuration is done and the associated initialization code will be generated also. Warning, the, this functionality doesn't generate any initialization code for GPIO functionality, input, output, or analog. But this is really a way to book a way on the same pin more than one signal. To remove the pin stacking, you can do it because you've got more than one configuration for this one. So if I just remove, for example, the GPIO output, now I can remove the stack. Pinout menu. So in this video, I would like to review together the pinout menu. If I click on it, we can see some undo and redo mode. So Control Z, Control Y, as usual on many applications. Then we've got an option to keep the current signal placement. That means it will fix the allocation despite any future conflict during your configuration. But this could be done also thanks to pinning and pinning configuration we have seen in the previous video. Then we've got an option to show the user label or to hide it. So for example, in here I created a label LED1. If I untick this, you can see just the GPIO now. Let's keep it this one. Then we've got different functionality to reset somehow your configuration. Disable all mode will disable uh, all the peripheral and middleware. That means anything what is not a simple uh, signal like a GPIO. So if I doing this here, only the user one configuration will be removed and the LED and GPIO output will be kept. As you can see, here it just disappear. If I do a control Z, then it's configured again. Other possibility, clear pin out, it will clear everything. If you want to start again your configuration and you are somehow lost, you can do this. If I do a control Z again, I come back to my example. Clear single map signal. It was this orange signal. It when you configured a signal for an IP and you don't configure the IP. As you can see, it's in a range, that means it's not fully configured. And you can just clear this one or all the pins that are in such configuration. So in this case, you can see all of the stuff is not, I would say, impacted. Again, Control Z. Then you've got a pin signal option. Oh, this one is quite useful because it lists all the pins that you have configured and you can pinning them and pinning them in some list way, I will say. You can add the user label on each pin and it's more convenient than just clicking on all of them. So for example, com rx2, com tx2 and apply. And here you can see I change the label for all the things in a single menu. So it could be quite useful somehow. List the pinout compatible MCU quite useful functionality also when you do some porting task because it will list for you all the compatible um, MCU or with some restriction. I won't go into details about this because it will be addressed in another video about the porting task. So just know it was there and you can play with it quite simple. You can also export your pinout so 
with alt function or without alt function. It was just exported in a CVS file and you can open it with Excel and just share with anybody the pinout that you have defined. Set and use GPIO, this one is quite useful. Um, for example, you finish your design and all the unused GPIO, you want to configure them in analog mode. The purpose of this would be for power consumption because analog mode, you will deactivate the Schmidt trigger of all the pin. So it will be a gain for the power consumption. So I will do it on all the left, all the, the pins that are not configured. As you can see, it's automatic and can finish the initialization code for you less readable for sure. I can reset what I've done. And sorry, I forget to say that I want to do it on all the unassigned pin. I come back to my configuration. Um, what do we have still? The pinout view color, you remember I already told you about this. It was the meaning of all the color that you've got for the pin, if they are well configured or if not. You've got detail about this. And to finish, you've got a layout reset. This is when you are a little bit lost in your configuration. I don't know, you hide many things. You are moving from one thing to another. You are somehow lost. Just do a layout reset. It will put everything in the default mode. Not from the pinout point of view, but just for the, the way that Cubemix show you the information. And that's it what I want to show you in this video. Thanks for your attention.